Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Smartery 2024 exhibition at the Helipad Exhibition Center in Gandhi Nagar, where innovation meets energy transformation. Mojo for Industry is here at the forefront, bringing you insights from the industry leaders shaping the future of energy. Today, we are privileged to be at the Bergen Group booth. Where we will delve into crucial discussions surrounding the latest developments in the energy sector. Today we will be talking with Mr. D N Singh and Mr. Kara. The exhibit at the exhibitions uh, of Smartery and more about anti-dumping, uh, the hydrogen, the rooftop solar, and such uh, topics. Hello, sir. Welcome to Mojo for Industry. Uh, so, sir, so my first question would be: With the Indian government initiating an anti-dumping probe into imports of solar glass from China and Vietnam, how do you foresee this move impacting the Indian solar industry? China is one country who has been taking advantage of the Indians' non-availability of the sufficient supply chain within India and the lack of manufacturing of the cells and modules. because of which there is a price differential and india has been suffering the government must allow all those uh, who wants to set up their glass manufacturing for solar and solar is a tempered glass and we have seen five or six big companies who are in the architecture glass but in time to come more and more glass will be used when there will be on both sides by uh, directional there will be the glass to be put on the modules so this means the glass consumption will increase and also the manufacturing of the modules is also going to be quite high with the new schemes government is bringing in like on the rooftops for the mufat bijli yojana by the prime minister's uh, announcements we must allow all the supply chain components this there should be not only the glass aluminum cells modules can be also having a lot of uh, another uh, like junction boxes wires and chemical uh, this electrical things and they all have to be made made in india So, what measures do you believe uh, are necessary to safeguard the interest of domestic solar manufacturers while uh, ensuring the sustainable growth for the sector? Yeah, first of all, the government must invest in the policy lekan. So now the government should take policy lekan manufacturing in their own hands, or they should give minimum capex of 50 percent to other players, and they should also rectify their PLI scheme. in which polysilicon and the modules have no co correlation in the measurement of giving incentives the pli scheme has been instrumental uh, in driving growth in the solar sector so how do you assess its effectiveness in promoting the, uh, domestic manufacturing and fostering innovations country like ours where we are much behind at chinese or uh, scale of production in solar equipment so definitely government intervention on the policy level uh, is very very important and uh, i must say that government by bringing the pli scheme for encouraging the investors to invest in pv sector across the value chain right from beginning policy lekan to module has done a good job but at the same time i would like to add that uh, we have to be a little smarter in implementing our policies and think it through so like uh, right now there has been restrictions on uh, travel of chinese uh, technicians to come here though we know that most of the equipments are imported from china so i don't know exactly how it may unlike any other uh, representatives of the equipment supplier in india we support our customers from beginning to end by installation commissioning and after sale service we are facing difficulties because the chinese experts cannot come but still we are trying very hard to get the so going get the industrialization in solar industry going by sending our people and giving them training and uh, now we are doing installations of uh, several more than one or two places by ourselves so pli yes it has helped it will help but 
it has to be expedited it has to be coordinated better number two <coughs> market thing i must say add that the prime minister one uh, very simple uh, input given to the pv market the prime minister's mukt bijli yojana in one stroke he has created a market of more than 30 gigawatt in the country and i am sure that in that installation in those installations uh, definitely the indian made solar cells and modules will be required so our uh, uh, investors in that area they should be encouraged and they should be enthusiastic enough to go get this market growing and to get the the whole scheme successful and that will do two things one thing is that you know a lot of people will be benefited who will get the free bidding by the installation with the help of the government installation of the solar uh, panels on their rooftop and <coughs> and then uh, market will grow and then a ecosystem a base will be created and then then we will be able to do faster scaling up of the production and then we will be also able to faster do technical innovations and catch up with the china in technology so so uh, i talk about the rooftop now uh, the rooftop uh, installations and hydrogen uh, hydrogen technologies are gaining momentum as a viable solutions for decentralized energy production so how do you envision the integration of these technologies in india's uh, energy landscape uh see the solar electricity generation is a well established technology now what we want to do more is that bring in hydrogen as a energy so hydrogen can be used in two ways like right now we have to if we have to store the electricity generated by solar then we have to use batteries and then we have to use it whenever we want but hydrogen can be used for the same purpose because the electricity generated by solar can be used to split the water and generate hydrogen and then again hydrogen can be used to generate electricity by a device called fuel cells so this can be used as a uh, as a storage of energy as a means to store the energy and then when we are talking about evs electrical vehicles now now these evs are nowadays going to run whichever the new version or the current version and the based on the uh, lithium ion batteries but future we can get rid of those batteries we can have hydrogen generated by the solar electricity and then use that hydrogen to generate again electricity in the cars in the electrical vehicle vehicles through uh, uh, through the fuel cells so that way we will be able to completely decarbonize the whole atmosphere so so uh, what challenge uh, challenges and opportunities do you foresee in scaling up rooftop uh, rooftop solar and hydrogen adoption across the various sectors and uh, the countries like japan since uh, 2014 they have formed a policy they made the cars also to be run by the hydrogen so india has also brought the hydrogen r&d policy as only demonstrational uh, purposes of capped a budget of only 1000 cr i would say instead of uh, experimenting it is better to follow the successful implementation of the hydrogen policy by japan so that we don't lag behind at least in this technology so the challenge is number one is the knowledge so in our universities neither solar nor hydrogen has any curriculum in the undergraduation as well as in the post graduation so manpower is the one of the uh, biggest challenge and here the government must give enough attention that without the skilled manpower nothing and no new uh, technology can be implemented number 2 the challenges is uh, the uh, discoms they are, they all the employees they mostly are from the old generation or they have their knowledge is not updated so they also need to be educated on the 
solar as well as on the hydrogen. This is the second challenge. Third challenge is that we have to create a mass scale uh, movement for educating the Indian citizens that how to utilize the solar as well as hydrogen in such a way that it costs them the least. So these are few challenges I can foresee, but to produce hydrogen, to store hydrogen, then to transport it, and then to use it. There are so many technologies involved, and the academia as well as the industry must spend time to see that we give enough knowledge to our coming generation. Right. Uh, so coming back to the Smartery exhibition, uh, Smartery India exhibition. So could, can you share us the key highlights of Bergen's uh, group's participation at this year's event? So our purpose was to come here to give a complete solution, right from polysilicon to the module. And there, at two very important nodes, the starting node at the polysilicon and the in-between node, wafering. Uh, we are giving the European solutions and cell and the module line, we are uh, giving, un giving from the Chinese solutions. So uh, this is the one contribution and uh, this is the one important thing we want to convey our uh, people here. That uh, And then we are also giving uh, the uh, uh, assurance to investors that here is a company which can work with them uh, from concept to completion because we have a very knowledgeable team. Would you like to add anything to that? No, he has said enough. The only thing uh, my again emphasis is on scaling the people because uh, for absorption of the technology, for the taking best use of that and also to bring down the prices, the skilled people can do a good job as well as there will be less breakdowns. So technologies are changing, new technologies are coming. There is a big buzzword about hydrogen, about uh, solar electrical vehicle, but now you can imagine when the cars will be only electrical vehicle, where all these mechanics will go, who are nowadays just repairing or changing the uh, engine as well as uh, you can say pistons and rings. So there is a need to train those guys also in electrical. So viewers, as we conclude our discussion here at the Bergen Group booth, we gave valuable insights into the current state and the future trajectory of the Indian solar industry. From addressing challenges related to imports and promoting domestic manufacturing to leveraging innovative schemes and technologies, it's evident that the collaboration and strategic initiatives are key to realizing India's renewable energy ambitions. Hello viewers, I'm Neha Wagle. If you liked watching this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends. And make sure to subscribe to our channel and follow us so you never miss any of the latest industrial news from around the country and the world. Stay connected with us and keep watching Mojo for Industry for all the latest updates.